Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to start with these verses 14 and 15. Once again, verse 14 reads, If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Greek is very clear. It has different meanings. Saved is a good one. Delivered, protected, safe from danger. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. I said it many times, I'm going to repeat it again. Salvation is not the in question here. Salvation is not at stake in these verses. Anyone that's at the Bema seat of Christ is saved from the second death. Their place in eternity is secure because they put their trust and confidence in Jesus Christ in His finished work. That gives us that wonderful opportunity to be saved. by His sacrifice, what He was willing to do for our sake. Now some will be at this judgment seat of Christ, this Bema, Bema, and probably going to be surprised what they thought was a good work that could be rewarded won't pan out and they won't see if receive any rewards and one of the problems of that happening the way it's going to happen is because of the lack of attention this subject matter has been given fault the preacher fault the pastor you call yourself pastor you better start pastoring This is not to be neglected, these verses. The outcome at this Bema seat is reward or loss of reward. That's it. Salvation is not in question. I have to say that almost every time in this series because you never know who's joining for the first time. So those of you that have been around now for a while, be patient with it. Now, tonight I want to get a better understanding of this word reward that's being used over and over. That is mistos, M-I-S-T-H-O-S for those of you who want to write it down. It's the most common word for rewards. It's used about, I think it's 29 times in the New Testament. And it refers to, you can write this down also because it's important, what is earned. You can't earn your salvation but you can earn your rewards which are promised to us in the scriptures. It refers to what is earned and its primary meaning in the scriptures is wages or higher. Jesus used it in his parables of the workers in the vineyard
you can read the story. Let's just go to it. Matthew chapter 20. Because I have very little time tonight because of my opening comments. I'm trying to figure out what to present to you tonight. There might have to be a continuation on this word or words that I want to present to you tonight, but we'll see. <clears throat> like I said, Jesus referred to it in his parable to the workers of the vineyard. It's called the parable of laborers. Let's just read this. Starting in chapter 20, Matthew 20, verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. A better translation would be master of the house. Which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and, what, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Okay, the first group, we get a penny a day. Second group, what were they promised? Whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Verse 5, again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. Two more times after that. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others. Group after group after group. He went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, What stand ye here all day idle? They said unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard. And whatsoever is right, thou shalt ye receive. So the folks in the eleventh hour, The folks in the third hour, the sixth hour and ninth hour, the third, sixth, ninth, and eleventh hour, they were promised, whatsoever is right that ye shall, that shall ye receive. Now, the people that were hired first thing in the morning, they were promised a penny a day for their work in the vineyard. And then groups of people were hired throughout the day. They weren't given a set amount. But they were promised whatsoever is right that shall ye receive. So the one that determines what the wage would be for that worker, no matter the length of time he was working in that day, would be determined by the master of the house. Who do you think is going to be the master of the house at the beam of Christ? Simple. Jesus. Because he's going to determine whatsoever is right. He's going to determine what he has promised from the beginning. And there is promises. And what happened? Verse 8. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers, that means all of them now, and give them their hire. The word there in the Greek is mistos, which has been translated hire, wages, rewards in the scriptures. Beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. At, these people were hired at the, almost at the end of the workday, but yet they were, received the same amount of wage as the person that started at the beginning of the day. Seems very unfair, doesn't it? 
What kind of master of the house is that? When the first, but when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise receive every man a penny. Sounds fair, doesn't it? We were here longer than anyone else, so shouldn't we get more? Let me tell you, there's going to be Christians at the judgment seat of Christ that have been Christians all their life, and then they're going to receive what they receive, and then all of a sudden somebody came back to the end of the, their life and became a Christian, but they put their life in hyperdrive knowing their time was short and having the right type of faithfulness attitude to the mission they were called to do, be part of, to participate in, are going to receive the same reward that somebody was a Christian all their life. Or maybe they even receive more rewards. The whole thing sounds ludicrous, unfair, bad heavenly management, whatever you want to call it. You couldn't operate in the world that way. You would have a rebellion. Somebody's going to start a union. I wonder if there's going to be any unions in heaven. What are you going to call it? The eternal union? To rebel against the judgment that you will receive, that you think is unfair? I'm being silly to make the point. When the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they received it, they murmured against the good men of the house. The good men of the house is the same word as used as householder, so it's the master of the house. Saying, these last have wrath but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I, de I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that, thine take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, unto this last, even as unto thee. It is not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own. Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last, for many be called, but few chosen. Now, I could say many things about this parable. But what jumps out to me in this parable is that it's important to be faithful to the opportunities that are presented to you. It's not quantity, obviously. It's quality. Not how we perceive concerning what we think and what should be rewarded. <clears throat> The master of the household will determine by how you earn your wage. If you join in late, nothing to do with salvation here. It has everything to do with rewards. Rewards are not given by chance. They are earned. Just like we earn our wages. They are earned. And will be rewarded. At the beam of Christ. You have to understand this. Go to 2 Corinthians 5. I keep jumping back and forth to these verses. 
I want you to understand this. Quit worrying about what somebody else will receive. And don't think because you're a Christian longer than someone else that you, sh you should receive more than they do. If you're not your heart into participating to earn those wages, my friend, but you still call yourself a Christian, and you do have the trust and confidence that Jesus Christ has called you saved, but you decided to be a couch potato for Jesus, don't expect that this beam of seat of the beam of Christ many rewards. And someone might come in late in the day as a Christian, late in their life, and they're turned on. They're red hot. There's no slowing them down. They want to be participating and get involved in everything they can that means something for for the here and now that earns them the wages, the rewards that are promised in the hereafter. There's no handouts at the beam of Jesus Christ for do-nothingness. There's no welfare program And that's been taken advantage of. There's legitimate cases in the secular sense. But there's a lot of people that taking advantage of the welfare system that just don't want to go back to work. And if the government would cut off certain benefits, they scream bloody murder. Thinking that they deserve what they didn't earn. Second Corinthians 5.10, before I take that sidebar and go somewhere else with it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive, circle that word receive, the things done in this body according to that he hath done, works done repeatedly in the Greek, whether it be good or bad or worthless. This is also central in understanding rewards. That each one may receive the things done in the body. The word receive there is komizo. K-O-M-I-Z-O. And what does it mean? I've got to wrap this up quickly in the next few minutes. It means to receive back. It also means to, rec to recover what is owed to you. And most of you, in your pompous, know-it-all, spiritual attitudes, based on nothing in God's Word, by the way, will be the first ones to criticize what I'm saying tonight, convincing yourselves that Jesus doesn't owe me anything. For our salvation, you're absolutely right. As far as rewards, wages, you're absolutely wrong. Because if I'm not right, then something's terribly wrong in God's Word. To receive back, write this down, to recover what is owed to you. You mean Jesus owes me something? Yes. Christ has chosen to be put, or oh, put it this way, Christ chose to be put himself. And this is going to hit you hard. But when I break it down, you understand why. Christ has chose to put himself in our debt. I can almost feel the shockwaves out there. There he goes. He finally lost it. You probably say to yourself. These are not my words. These are his. 
Either he's wrong or I'm wrong. He's right, and when I'm preaching about what he says, makes me right. Christ has chose to put himself in our debt. Write that down. I'll repeat it again. Christ has chose to put himself in our debt. Now, I'm determining if I could get this done. That's why there was a pause there. I only got a few minutes left and I'm not going to be able to do it. This Greek word receive, because it carries the meaning of the receive back to recover what is owed to you. That's what you do from paycheck to paycheck. You do what you're told to do you get paid for your services in wages. At that bema of Christ, that's exactly what's going to happen. Listen. You could have used a different word or chose a different meaning for the word received in the Greek, but he chose komizos, or komizos, komizos, excuse me, and it means to receive back. Recover something that is owed to you, which puts, if I'm right, Christ in a position that he chose to put himself in concerning us. He chose to put himself in our debt. That means he owes us something. And I know what you're going to say, he's God, he doesn't owe us anything. That's right. But you're missing the word that I put in that sentence. He chose. It was his decision. Be put in that position. Not mine, not yours. We're not God. But he did. He chose to come down here and rescue us. Nothing that we could have done. No wage that we could have paid to earn our salvation. This has nothing to do with salvation. But wages, rewards, because we... As disciples, in a sense, are hired to do what He has called us to do. That's part of the Great Commission. In turn, He then chose to put him, him, Himself in our debt. And I will expound on that and go to the Scriptures where you can see what I'm saying and how I unfold it to you next time I'm on the subject matter. That's enough food for thought for today. I'm out of time anyway. Chew on that until I preach on this again. I want to make very clear, nothing to do with salvation, because this is a series on eternal rewards. Nothing to do with salvation. Everything to do with what's at this bema, what's promised, what's expected, what God's word has declared, and it's for us to understand the meaning of it. And that's what this series hopefully is doing for you. Now, I'm going to pick up exactly at this place, and we will move the ball forward to get a deeper understanding. How did Christ... And why did Christ choose to put himself in our debt? You got it? I want to hear from you. All of you. So play a song.